there is sunshine in the shadows. There is sunshine in the rain, in the rain. There is sunshine in heartaches. Oh, there is sunshine in the pain, in the pain. Although your heart may break with sorrow, and your low load is hot, hot to bear, hot to bear. There is sunshine, blessed sunshine. There is sunshine everywhere. There is sunshine in the shadows. There is sunshine in the rain, in the rain. There is sunshine. In heartaches, oh, there is sunshine in the pain, in the pain. Although your heart may break with sorrow, and your low load is hot, hot to bear, hot to bear. There is sunshine, blessed sunshine, there is sunshine everywhere. Do you know jesus our lord and savior jesus the son of god have you ever seen him or taste of his pleasure jesus the Son of God. Say with me now. Oh, Hallelujah. sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus, the Son of God. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Jesus, yes. the Son of God. Yes. Amen. If you've ever tasted of his pleasure, and the psalmist says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hands of the enemy. We bless you this morning. We thank yes. God that Hallelujah. we're able to come before you today. God bless you, Sister Kelly, Brother Elliot. Love you all. We thank God that he's allowed us once again to use this medium to come to you. And we are yet praying and thanking God for his goodness just because we went to sleep last night didn't mean that we had to get up this morning. Yes. It is of the goodness of the Lord that we have not been consumed by the enemy. And we are so grateful. God bless your heart. We ask you to continue to use our website and you can communicate with us, even chat line, even now. You can also email us at preach to all 47 at gmail.com. And you can go to our website, the Wilderness Cry Ministry, amen, and get information yes. about us from there. God ever bless your hearts. Listen, we're thanking the Lord and we need his help again with all, with all, all, everything that's going on. We're thanking God for his goodness. But we don't want God to leave us. We want him to be right there when we need it. So let us get ready to go to the throne of the Lord seeking and asking his help. Yes. Father, in the precious name of oh, Jesus, yes, once again, we come before you. Hallelujah. We're thanking you for your goodness. We do realize that of ourselves, we can do nothing. Nothing. Yes. And we thank you that we have a God that there is nothing impossible for you. And we thank you, Lord, thank that you. Thank you. While we slept and slumber last night, you kept the deaf angel yes, away. Lord. You touched our bodies. Hallelujah. And you're even doing it now. Yes, Jesus. Give us speedy recovery from whatever sickness or disease that we have. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask that you move in our families, 
our children. And Lord, don't forget the hospital rooms and convalescent homes, the prison wards and the officers, the wardens, the jail home, jail officers. Look on the officers there. Move through the land and touch the hearts of the power that be. Change their hearts where they have a heart for the widows, the needy, those that are in shelter, those that need food and clothing. Yes. Lord, we look into you who is the author and finish of our faith. Overthrow the plans of the enemy. Bind his hand today and you be glorified. We ask it in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Thanking the Lord for my wife continue to be a blessing to me and with me in this venture that we are in. Amen. And we're going to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen. Let us get ready to see what God has given us today. I was in meditation, praying and thinking, and that phrase came to me, the goose and the gander. Mm -hmm. What is good? You've heard that phrase many times. What is good for the goose is also good for the gander. If something is good for one person, it ought to be good for the other. Or looking at it from this point of view, if it's wrong for me, then it ought to be wrong for you. There should no be exception to the rule. And Romans 2, 6 tell us that God will render to every man according to his deeds. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. The Bible says in Romans 2, 8 and 9, but unto them that are contentious, think about this, and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath those who are set in their mind that bound in their mind that they're going to do wrong they'll do you wrong they'll do anyone wrong because they want to preserve themselves the bible says tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil Oh, it's coming. Again, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. gander. And God has no respect of person. He says it's for the Jews first. And then it's for the Gentiles. No one is excluded. No one is left out. Galatians says in the sixth chapter seven, it says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. So those who are bound on doing evil, and then they're smooth about it, it's going to come back to them. It's like a boomerang. You can throw it out, and you don't watch it. It will come right back to you. The Bible let us know in Romans 2 and 11 that there is no respect of person to God. God has no respect of person. That's why I love God's word, because even though those who uh, loved him got out of place, God would not let them go guiltless. God would not let them just go anyway. But somehow or another, we think that we don't have to pay a price for what we do. So the goose and the gandal is going to get what's coming to them. The proud, the boastful are going to drink out of the same cup. Oh, yes. If it's good for one, it should be good for the other. If it's bad for one, it should be bad for the other. Listen, if your child mess up, you ought to correct them. But if you let them go, the Bible says sin would not leave your house. Then we find that the Bible gives us good understanding that the God that we serve, the God that made the universe, there is no creature that's not manifested in his sight. 
but all things are naked and open before him before the eyes of him in whom we have to do <clears throat> sometimes we tend to forget who's going to have the have the last say so i've been to funerals where uh, known person matter of fact i told some year some time ago that uh, i i was going to this church and the uh, pastor asked me to preach and had no idea one of the young ladies that had gotten mad with the pastor because her father died in the bed of another woman and he was married and she got mad with the pastor because the pastor didn't put him in heaven. Sometimes people think that you can say something good about them and that's it. But God is going to have the last say so. Even in Revelations 2 and 20, 21, God let us know that he gave Jezebel as bad as she was. He gave her space to repent. But he said she would not. So God sees everything that goes on. In Genesis 18, we find that he looked and saw Solomon Gomorrah, how sin had been spreading like a green bay tree. It started off small. Any seed starts off small, but it'll, it will grow. And he saw Solomon Gomorrah. He saw how the Egyptians treated Israel. And he heard how the king told the midwives when the Israelites' women are on the stool, in other words, when they get ready to have their child, if it's a male child, kill it. Yes. And the same thing you hear me saying, I'm bringing it up again. Planned Parenthood is killing babies. They're killing prophets. They're killing evangelists. They're killing missionaries. Kill them in the womb and out of the womb. BLM. And the woke ideology. All of that stuff is anti-God. I'll keep saying it, keep knocking it home until you get it. They don't think God see what's going on. I sometimes wonder what kind of spirit is in a person who will kill babies, the helpless and the hopeless. But Jesus told the Pharisees, you of your father, the devil. It gets in their DNA and that's what's in them. They're just like their father. He come to steal, kill and to destroy. And that's all that's about trying to destroy the plan of God. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And, and it's, it's amazing. While it's happening to someone else, or while you're dishing it out, it's okay. You remember the bad boys of Eli? The Bible, if you read 1 Samuel, you'll find out that Eli had some bad boys. They mishandled and misused the house of God. And Eli would not do anything about it. But later on, when you read in that fourth chapter, and Eli, the man said unto Eli, I'm he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, Eli asked him, what's wrong? What, what you're saying here? In the 17th verse, the messenger answered and, and said, Israel fled before the Philistine." God's people have no reason to flee before the enemy. No, 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 no. He even had to ask Elijah, where are you running from Jezebel for? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he says the Philistines, they have been also a great slaughter among the people. And two of your sons, they've been killed. And, and and see, long as it was his sons was acting up, he had no problem. But when he heard that they had died in a slaughter, he fell and broke his neck. See, long as it was somebody else, it was okay. Long as they were mistreating the congregation, it was okay. And then when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees in Mark 12, he says, they sought to lay hands on him, but feared the people 
for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. See, when it comes back your way, uh, many times you can't take it, but you can dish it out. God saw how they treated Noah. Noah had been asked by God to build an ark. And I can imagine how they teased his son and, and the women mocked his wife and, and talking about them, some crazy folk over there. They over there helping their father build an ark. And they ostracized them and ridiculed them day in and day out. God saw that. You remember in 1 Samuel 1, <coughs> Ekaniah had two wives, one Peniah and one Hannah. And because God had blessed Peniah to be able to have children, she would always agonize and, 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 and tease Hannah. God saw that. And you remember that in Luke, the 16th chapter, that rich man who fared sumptuously every day, had good clothes on, red bottom shoes, as they call it, $1,600, $2,000 suit on, had the best of camels. And all uh, Lazarus did was he was being laid at his, at his, at his, at his steps, the gates. He went in and out and he was just laid there. And, and the thing was, he just desired, if I could just get some crumbs from your table. Sometimes we don't want to share because God has blessed us. But the Bible tells us it's more blessed to give than to receive. So he was there. And even the Bible said that the dogs came and licked his wound. That's how bad it was. No doctor showed up. Dogs showed up. And they licked his wound. God saw that. And we know the worm changed on that because the Bible tells us he lifted up his eyes in hell. And I know he wished that he would have done. I'm talking about what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So what's happening here in this nation? It is happening. Amen. It happened to David and, and others. You remember when God had blessed David to be the king of Israel and uh, David had everything that a man could want. But instead of him going to battle, uh, he went out on the porch. I, I didn't, this is me. I didn't read it nowhere. But I believe that David spied Bathsheba before and decided, well, uh, I'm going to take my chance. And the Bible let us know how the story went. He, She was married to Uriah and battle was going on and he made sure that Uriah got killed in the battle. You know, life sometimes have a way of letting us get away with something sometimes. But sooner or later, a bill comes in. You know, sometimes when you don't pay your bill and you think all is done. And sometime later on, you get a bill. Well, when the bill showed up, David had to pay. And I'm saying this to America. We've enjoyed plenty of benefits because if you look back over the history of the United States of America, you'll find that that much prayer have been had over this country. But retribution is coming. And they're talking about reparation. Retribution is coming. Look what has happened down at Walt Disney world where they used to be a family friendly place but now all they want to do is indoctrinate you into the things of the transgenders and whatever even their matinees they show two boys laying in the bed kissing on each other Young ladies kissing on each other. And then we have our libraries, which got the drag queens sitting and reading stories uh, to our little babies, indoctrinating them at an early age, getting them to look, to look at men dressed up like women. I'm talking about this nation has gone down to the bottom of the bottom, and they don't even know it because the God of this world has blinded their eyes. 
and blinded their minds. But I say to you, if you if you know someone or you're going to uh, make plans to go to uh, uh, Disneyland in, 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 in Orlando, Florida, I, I, I beg you, please Google this or do it on YouTube. It's, it's, a, it's a, a documentary called Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. And you won't look at Walt Disney the same way that you did back in the 60s and 70s and back. And then we have a country that's mutilating children bodies. Just heard on the radio yesterday, young lady who was convinced at the age of 16 to change all of her body parts. And she came to herself around, I think she's 20 or 21 now, realizing that she can't be a man. But she got to take all of these drugs trying to get herself back on track. She got mental problems and physical problems that won't go away. God got to show up and settle that situation. You got the government pushing this thing to where they don't even want the parents to know what's going on. Just read yesterday where you got prostitution, prostitutes right across the street from school. Then I was sent some information on the Grammy Awards. I didn't look at it. But at the Grammy Awards, all they were doing was worshiping the devil. And I mean, satanic things going on. If you take a look at it, it's disgusting. Then we had so-called Christian groups sitting there wanting to get their award. What in the world can, can, can the world offer to God's people? You had a, a young man there who had turned his body into a woman and he was Jim and now they call him Kim Petrus. But you cannot change the chromosomes. It remains the same. Sooner or later, what's happening to the goose gonna happen to the gander? What happened to the gander gonna happen to the goose? God don't have a respective person. Then you have Sam Smith, who he don't know what he is, non-binary. What is that? He neither male nor female. He is some that you, he just perverted. I'm talking about these things are going on and our children are subjected to them. Children are being introduced to them and the country not doing anything. Then they had a nerve not to sing a song called Unholy. Those Christian artists there want to receive an award. What in the world is going on? The devil don't have nothing to give God's people. Even we find in Matthew 4, where the Bible says again, the devil taketh him, talking about Jesus, unto a exceeding high mountain, and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory thereof, and say unto him, all these things will I give you if you just fall down and worship me. What in the world are you doing with the with, 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 with the, the worldly people? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. The devil don't own anything. It belongs to God. So Ephesians tell us, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. It's no way the people of God can fellowship with the world, with demonic spirits. <laughs> All these things, things are going in being an agreement of mutilating your children. I'm supporting them. Now tell them the truth. The truth will make them free. And then look at what didn't happen to Hunter Biden. All the mess he's in, drug addict and all of that. Messing with his, have, laying with his brother-in-law wife. I'm telling him things messed up. Then listen, I'm sorry, but the president said himself. In the State of the Union message, he demand that Congress codify Roe. And then he tell them to pass the Equality Act, making the LGBTQ and whatever else, making them equal to a family, a mother and a father, a husband and a wife. Then Psalms 50, 
1, 15, 21 tell us, these things have I, have you done? God said this. Now watch this. These things has thou done. And God said, I kept quiet. Didn't say nothing. Yes, yes. God will give you space. All the preaching that's going on in America. I mean, churches in every neighborhood. Sometimes five and six churches. If you think that God going to let him and anyone else get away with this mess, church leaders, they're not standing up talking about money, money cometh and prosperity. God is going to get the goose like he get the gander. He, you're not going to get away. We know God is long suffering. I said it before. But God got good memory. Bible says in 2 Peter 2, 4, and 5, For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Judgment day is coming. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. They teased him and mocked him. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Now watch this, watch this. And turning the city of Solomon and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow. God is going to overthrow the goose and the gander. God is going to overthrow the leaders, spiritually and naturally so, that don't stand up for righteousness sake. Then the Bible said, making an example of them, those that should live ungodly. Made an example of it. So what's happening, uh, what happened then is going to happen now. But God says also in that verse 50 and 21, but I will reprove thee and set them in order when? Before their eyes. God said that. Then he says in that 22nd verse, now consider this. God asking you to think about it. He gave Jezebel time to repent, but she wouldn't. But he said, consider this. <coughs> Ye that forget God. You that forget the ways of God. You that forget the, un the, the, the righteousness of God. The kindness of God. He said, lest I tear you in pieces, there be none to deliver. God has promised a day of reckoning. He did it with Pharaoh. He did it with King Saul. He did it with the rich man. <coughs> and then Psalms 106 and 17. And the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Aram. And then God let us see that David was a man after his own heart. But God had to tell David when David messed up. Listen, thus said the Lord in 2 Samuel 2. Thus said the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thine wives before thine eyes and give them unto neighbors. He shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. Watch this now. Verse 12. But thou did it secretly. You did it in secret. But I will do this before the all Israel and before the sun. Be sure that your sins will find you out. Then God goes on to let us know, amen, that he had to rebuke David. Send Nathan to rebuke David. Then in my conclusion about the goose and the gander, it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man, not forgetting God. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing. God know what you're doing behind closed doors, under the cover, in the midst of the night. God sees it, whether it be good or whether it be bad. 
So please don't get caught drinking from the cup of the goose and the gander. But reverence God, respect God, love God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Even in the midst of all the damnation that was going on, Noah found grace. And look, Mary found favor with God. You can find it today. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him return unto the Lord. This is my, the word that God has given to me to share with you today. Amen. And if you would do that, God will bless you and he'll keep you from the things of the devil. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, we thank you so much, so much for your loving kindness and tender mercy. Yes. Lord, touch the hearts of men and women touch everywhere. Heart. Let them be drawn unto you. The enemy has blinded their minds and their hearts. But Lord, let this gospel, the glorious preaching of the gospel, yes, let it touch the heart of men and women everywhere. everywhere. Lord, from the White House down to the poor house yes, across the world. Yes, yes. You're soon to come. Lord, bind the hands of the enemy. Move in a mighty way. Do a new thing. Let the fallow ground be broken up. Yes, Stretch forth thy hand today. Touch, heal, and deliver. And set free. Yes. We ask this in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to ask you, if you will, to subscribe, like, like and share. And don't forget don't to throw that little thumb up to just the way of encouragement. Yes. And listen, don't let that boomerang, don't let yourself be found drinking from the same cup of the goose and the gander. Amen. But look into Jesus, who's the author and finish of our faith. God loves you today, and we love you. And remember, God daily loads us with benefits. Receive the benefits of God today. Be just, just, just be happy in the Lord. Yes, yes. May God ever do you good. And don't forget to tune in yes. every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. and every Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Yes, God bless you both. And we love you. We love you today yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Amen. And amen. amen.